Attention, we are now at DEFCON 1. Security lockdown. The States has carried out massive precision strikes on three key nuclear facilities in Iran. The goal is to stop what Israel called Iran's progress in developing nuclear weapons. The problem the United States and Israel have is Iran almost certainly has materials and equipment whose location we don't know about. In our world today, there are nine countries that possess nuclear weapons. The United States, Russia, China, France, the United Kingdom, India, Pakistan, and North Korea. The ninth is Israel, a unique case. Israel maintains a policy of strategic ambiguity, neither confirming nor denying its nuclear arsenal. However, experts estimate that Israel likely possesses between 80 to as many as 400 nuclear warheads. There are currently over 12,000 nuclear warheads in existence shared among nine countries. Nine countries to rule them all. But what if soon there were to be a tenth? What if Iran was on the verge of developing nuclear weapons? Since the Islamic Revolution of 1979, when they toppled the Shah and took over the country, Iran's regime has consistently viewed Israel and the United States as their arch enemies. Chants of death to Israel and death to America have become common rhetoric at rallies and official state gatherings, often accompanied by burning American and Israeli flags. Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei himself has repeatedly referred to Israel as a cancerous tumor, vowing that Iran will support any nation or group fighting against it. To further their geopolitical goals, Iran actively funds and arms terrorist groups and militias across the region, notably Hamas in Gaza, Hezbollah in Lebanon, and the Houthis in Yemen. Iran has consistently claimed its nuclear ambitions are peaceful, aimed only at civilian energy production. But Iran's recent uranium enrichment has heightened fears over its nuclear intentions. By May 2025, the International Atomic Energy Agency reported that Iran had amassed 409 kilograms of uranium, enriched to 60% purity, far exceeding what is required for civilian use and dangerously close to weapons grade. Israel considers these developments an existential threat, with the Israeli Defense Forces, or IDF, citing intelligence suggesting Iran had enough enriched uranium to quickly produce up to 15 nuclear weapons. If indeed Iran were to develop nuclear weapons, given its record of indiscriminately firing hundreds of ballistic missiles and openly vowing to annihilate the Jewish state, it's not unthinkable they would use one. even with full knowledge that doing so would be a death sentence, triggering a massive retaliatory strike from Israel, and likely the United States, one that would all but guarantee the regime's complete destruction, they may still take that chance. In a world where the Islamic regime of Iran develops nuclear weapons and decides to use them against Israel, the most likely launch point would be one of Iran's fortified underground missile bases near Tabriz or Kerman Shah. These locations are not only hardened against aerial strikes, but also strategically positioned to offer the shortest and most direct ballistic path toward Israel, bypassing most of the restricted airspace over countries like Jordan and Syria. The delivery system for such a catastrophic strike would likely be Iran's most advanced medium-range ballistic missile, the Khorram Shah 4, also known as the K-Bar, capable of reaching distances between 2,000 and 4,000 kilometers. It was specifically engineered to carry heavy payloads, making it the most plausible candidate for a nuclear warhead. The missile's sheer range even allows it to threaten parts of Europe. To increase the chances of a successful nuclear strike. Iran would almost certainly precede it 
with a massive wave of conventional ballistic missile launches using platforms like the Shahab 3, Imad, and Fateh 110. These would serve to overwhelm Israel's missile defense systems like the Iron Dome, David's Sling, and Arrow 3. The goal would be to confuse and exhaust these interceptors, leaving a gap for the nuclear-armed missile to slip through. Once launched, the nuclear-armed K-Bar would take approximately 10 to 15 minutes to reach Israeli airspace. Measuring about 13 meters in length and one and a half meters in diameter, it is launched from a mobile transporter erector launcher, making it difficult to detect and neutralize before liftoff. The missile is powered by a single-stage liquid-fueled engine. During the boost phase, which lasts roughly three minutes, it climbs rapidly through the atmosphere, eventually entering suborbital space at an altitude exceeding 100 kilometers. At this point, the booster separates and the post-boost phase begins. A guidance platform, often referred to as the bus, continues to coast through space, carrying the nuclear warhead. As it nears the target, the bus deploys the re-entry vehicle, or RV, which then plunges back into the atmosphere at hypersonic speeds. Depending on wind and altitude, the final moments are measured in seconds. If Tel Aviv were the target and a 50 kiloton warhead were detonated as an airburst, the consequences would be apocalyptic. A fireball radius of roughly 320 meters would vaporize everything in its core. Thermal radiation, capable of causing third degree burns, would extend up to 3.4 kilometers. The immediate death toll could reach 180,000 with an additional 260,000 injured, effectively destroying one of Israel's most densely populated cities. Faced with an existential threat of this magnitude, Israel would likely activate its doomsday doctrine, the Samson Option. Named after the biblical figure who destroyed both himself and his enemies, this policy implies a massive retaliatory nuclear strike that would annihilate Iran in return. The result would be the deaths of millions and a possible chain reaction plunging the world into a broader, perhaps even global war. To prevent this worst case scenario from ever unfolding, Israel launched a preemptive operation known as Rising Lion. With precision strikes on Iranian missile sites and nuclear infrastructure, Israel aimed to dismantle Iran's nuclear ambitions before it was too late. In a surprise and highly coordinated attack, over 200 Israeli fighter jets, including the stealth-modified F-35I Adir, struck approximately 100 Iranian targets. The mission was executed in five waves and involved more than 330 precision-guided munitions. Key Iranian air bases, missile facilities, and nuclear infrastructure, including parts of Natanz, Isfahan, and Fordo, were targeted. Air superiority was achieved very quickly. Mossad had prepared the battle space in advance, sabotaging Iran's radar and air defense systems and even establishing a covert drone base near Tehran. This allowed Israeli jets to operate with near impunity, evading detection and resistance. Simultaneously, Mossad operatives carried out surgical assassinations of top Iranian military figures. Several senior intelligence officials and multiple nuclear scientists were also eliminated. 
The scale and precision of the assassinations shook the core of Iran's military establishment. About 40 minutes ago, Secretary of Defense Pete Hegg said, out with a strong statement about the impact of the bombs dropped on Iran's nuclear sites. Then on June 22, 2025, U.S. President Donald Trump announced the launch of Operation Midnight Hammer, a decisive U.S. airstrike targeting Iran's underground nuclear facilities. The mission centered around seven B-2 Spirit stealth bombers flying from Whiteman Air Force Base in Missouri on an 18-hour flight deep into Iranian airspace. Each bomber carried GBU-57 massive ordnance penetrators, which are 30,000-pound bunker buster bombs capable of striking fortified underground facilities. The primary targets were Iran's key nuclear installations at Fordow, Natanz and Isfahan. To achieve total surprise, the US military executed a sophisticated deception plan. A decoy flight of B-2 bombers was sent toward Guam to mislead Iranian and regional surveillance while the real strike group approached undetected. The operation also involved more than 125 supporting aircraft, including F-35s and F-22s, which provided escort, electronic warfare and refueling support. Additionally, U.S. Navy submarines launched Tomahawk cruise missiles to suppress Iranian air defenses. The Pentagon later confirmed that the strikes inflicted severe damage on the nuclear sites. Iran, however, denied these claims, stating that only minor structural damage occurred and that their nuclear program would continue. Then Tehran declared it would retaliate, vowing that every US military personnel and citizen in the region would now be a target. Iran fired rockets toward US military bases in the region, but no casualties were reported. A brief ceasefire followed between Israel and Iran, but almost as soon as it was declared, both sides were trading accusations of breaking it. The world is still holding its breath, waiting to see if peace can hold in a region where peace is a rare commodity.